Hi everybody. In this video, we'll look at a short but very beautiful algorithm known as Euclid's algorithm. The algorithm is named after Greek mathematician Euclid. We're not sure who invented it, but it was first documented by Euclid back in 300 BC in his book called Elements. So this algorithm is more than 2000 years old and the reason we still use it is because it is the fastest way to compute the GCD of two numbers. GCD or a greatest common divisor is the same concept that you probably learnt about in school. Let's define it in a slightly more formal way. Given two numbers A and B, we'll say that the GCD of A and B is the greatest number, let's call it G, that divides both A and B. So if we had A as 105 and B as say 350 and we did not know about Euclid's algorithm, how could we compute their GCD? Since GCD deals with the common divisors of both A and B, one efficient way of doing it would be to first compute all the factors of A105 and after that we could then see which of these factors also divide 350 perfectly. At this point we have the common divisors of both 105 and 350 and we can just choose the highest number from this set of common divisors to find the GCD. To find out all the factors of 105 we simply need to divide 105 by all numbers up to its own square root. This is because the factors of any number occur in pairs where the product of the pair is equal to the number itself and the lower half of the pair is less than or equal to the square root of the number and the higher half of the pair is greater than or equal to the square root of the number. To find out more about this concept, you can check out our video Finding All Factors of a Number. So in the case of a 105, its square root is roughly 10. So we will need to perform 10 divisions. We'll divide 105 against all numbers from 1 to 10 in order to find out all its divisors. If you perform these divisions manually, you will end up with a table like this. We can see here that 105 has exactly 8 divisors and these 8 divisors are found in pairs where each pair together has a product of 105. We'll now divide 350 by all 8 of these divisors. This means we'll need to perform another 8 divisions. After performing this 8 divisions, we'll see that 350 is divisible by exactly 4 of the divisors of 105. So the set of common divisors of 350 and 105 has 4 numbers. So our GCD is the highest of these numbers, which is 35. So as you saw, our pretty efficient divisor based algorithm took us only 18 divisions in order to compute the GCD of 350 and 105. Now let's see how well Euclid's algorithm performs for the same example. In the first step of Euclid's algorithm, we take the larger number 350 and we divide it by the smaller number 105 and compute the remainder. We get a remainder of 35. For our next step, the divisor from our first step 105 becomes the dividend and our remainder from the previous step 35 becomes the divisor. Computing the remainder again, we get 0. For our third step, we again follow a similar procedure. This time 35 becomes the dividend, while the divisor is 0. Now that our divisor is 0, Euclid's algorithm comes to an end, and the GCD is simply the last dividend. So our answer to the GCD of 105 and 350 is 35. So as you just saw, using Euclid's algorithm, we needed only two divisions to compute the GCD of 350 and 105. Compare this with our pretty efficient divisor-based algorithm, which took 18 divisions. 
Even for the small case, you can see how much faster Euclid's algorithm is. It was nine times faster in this case. Now that we have an idea of how Euclid's algorithm works, let's wipe this out and look at the code for Euclid's algorithm. So we call our function Euclid GCD since it computes GCD using Euclid's algorithm and it takes two integers as input A and B and these are the integers whose GCD will be computed. Before we perform the first remainder operation we need to set up the dividend as well as the divisor. The dividend is the greater value of A and B and we accomplish this using the ternary operator. So if A is greater than B we choose A otherwise we choose B. Similarly we use the ternary operator to also set up the divisor. As long as the divisor is not zero we can compute our remainders and we use the modulo operator to do that. We now set up the dividend and divisor for the next division operation. So the dividend for the next operation is the divisor of the current operation and the divisor for the next operation is the remainder from the current operation. When this loop exits we know that the divisor is zero and our algorithm is complete and the answer which is the GCD of A and B lies in the last dividend so we can simply return the dividend value that we have. That was a quick walkthrough of the code. Now let's track the values of the three variables dividend, divisor and remainder. For an example case to get a better understanding of how the algorithm works. So let's take the example where A is 400 and B is uh, 124. Of course we first execute this instruction which computes the dividend as the greater value of A and B. So dividend gets set as 400 and we then compute divisor as the lesser value of A and B which is uh, 124. Since the divisor is not equal to 0 we enter the loop where we compute the remainder for the first time. In this case it is 400 modulo 124 which is 28. At this point the value of dividend gets reassigned to the current divisor. So dividend becomes the current divisor which is 124 and the value of divisor gets reassigned to the current remainder so divisor becomes 28. Now we go back to this loop condition. Since the divisor is not 0 we again enter the loop and this time we compute the remainder of 124 and 28 which is 12. Again we reassign dividend and divisor and this goes on until finally the divisor gets assigned a value of 0. At this point this while loop condition check fails and we come out of the loop and we simply return the current value of dividend which is 4 and this is the GCD of 400 and 124. So in this example case Euclid's algorithm performed only 4 divisions to compute the GCD whereas our divisor based algorithm would have taken 17 divisions to compute the same GCD. So as you can see this ancient algorithm is quite fast. However it's not very useful to analyze the time taken for individual cases. What is really useful is if we could compute the order of the time taken for the worst case by Euclid's algorithm. This is also known as the worst case time complexity and is represented using the big O notation. If you want to know more about the big O notation and time complexity analysis in general you can check out our previous video series on time complexity analysis. Now let's wipe this out and compute the time complexity of Euclid's algorithm. Remember that time complexity of any algorithm is always expressed as a function of its input. So the time complexity of Euclid's algorithm must be a function of these two variables A and B. If you look at our code above you will see that we have three kinds of operations, assignment operations, comparison operations and the modulo or division operation. If we talk about infinitely large numbers then these operations would take time proportional to the number of digits in the number. So for example dividing to three digit numbers would be quite fast but dividing to 300 digit numbers would probably take 100 times that amount of time. In this code though we are not talking about infinitely large numbers. 
we are talking about int data type. You can see that all the variables in this code have data type of int. On a modern machine, int typically compiled to 32-bit numbers. For 32-bit numbers on a modern machine, there are microprocessor instructions that handle comparison, assignment, as well as division in constant amount of time. This means that all the individual instructions of our code will run in a constant amount of time. Let's assume that this while loop runs x number of times where x is some function of a and b that we don't know. Then the time complexity of the entire code would be big O 3 plus 4x since there are three constant time operations outside the loop and four constant time operations within the loop so we get 3 plus 4x. If we believe that x is a non-zero function, then x will dominate 3, so this becomes simply big O 4x. And since the big O notation already presumes that any constant may be applied to it, we can write 4x as simply x. We won't get into the details of calculating x, but it was first proven in the 1840s that x is proportional to the number of digits in the smaller number of a and b. Let's assume that a is greater than or equal to b, so b becomes our smaller number. By using the result proven in the 1840s, we can rewrite big O x as big O number of digits of b. Given a number b to compute its number of digits in the decimal representation, we can simply take the logarithm of b to the base 10. So we can rewrite big O digits of b as big O log b to the base 10. Since we are using big O notation, the base of the logarithm is not very important since we can convert logarithms of different bases by multiplying with a constant. So we can rewrite this as simply big O log b. So there you have it. We have derived the time complexity of Euclid's algorithm which is big O log b where b is the smaller number of the two numbers whose GCD is being derived. To, to understand how fast log b is, let's remember the previous algorithm that we used which consisted of computing the divisors first. The time complexity of that algorithm is square root of b. I won't go into how to derive that. You can check out our video finding all factors of a number to see that. But if we were to compare square root of b versus log b in a table, so let's say b is a thousand, then square root of b is roughly 30, whereas log b even to base 2 is roughly 10. So for values around 1000, the logarithmic value is 3 times less than the square root value. However, if we increase b to 1 million, square root of b goes up to 1000, whereas log b to base 2 just doubles to roughly 20. So now the logarithmic value is 50 times lower than the square root value. As we increase the value of b, this difference just gets more exaggerated. That's it for the time complexity analysis of Euclid's algorithm. Let's take a quick look at shortening the code of Euclid's algorithm without affecting its time complexity. The first method is to remove the assignment of maximum value to dividend and minimum value to divisor. In its place, we can simply set dividend to A and divisor to B. So what happens if A is less than B? Let's go back to our old example and instead of A being 400, this time let's make B as 400 and A as 124. So initially the dividend is 124 and the divisor is 400. We enter the loop and since the dividend is less than divisor, the remainder is nothing but the dividend itself. So remainder is 124. Now when divided and divisor get reassigned, the dividend becomes 400 and the divisor becomes 124. So our algorithm is back to the same state as if we had assigned dividend to the max value of a and b and divisor to the min value of a and b. It is just that the loop takes one extra turn. After this, the algorithm proceeds as usual to calculate the GCD of 4. We can shorten the code some more 
by replacing the dividend variable with A itself and replacing the divisor variable with B itself then the code would look like this. We can also reduce the code to a single line which is my favorite way if we're ready to use recursion. However, this way also adds some space complexity of big O log B and this is what the code looks like. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the implementation and time complexity of Euclid's algorithm. Thanks for watching.